So let's go back a few years to your parents or your, your grandparents, depending on how old your parents were. If you go back 40 years ago, almost everybody maintained a record of some kind of where their finances stood. And it was a written record. And, and this is how they knew how much money they had. Because you didn't have the internet, you couldn't. The bank keeps track of your finances as well. They keep it in a ledger in the bank's computer systems. But you didn't have an internet access to go check your bank's balance. The only time you knew what your bank balance was, if, if you went to the bank, you could know. Or once a month, you would get a statement from your bank that tells you what your balance was and what all of the activity was that happened on your bank. So for an entire month, either you had this or you had no idea how much money you had. Do you understand that? Can you believe that? Can you imagine living in that kind of world? <laughs> what, what are the problems that would happen that could happen in this world? Typo. typo. What kind of typo and what, what, what would it cause? Yes. Yes, that would be a very significant typo, wouldn't it be? Yeah. You skip, you skip a page in your, in your ledger and you, you don't realize that you skipped a page. You, you used to have to record the check number. Quite often people would for, they'd write a check quick and then they'd forget to record it in their ledger, so they've handed the check off to somebody and they no longer... Okay, do those things ever happen now? Not as often. Not as often. Okay, but my son, 16-year-old son, he was flying my high school. Last week, he learned a little bit about this sort of problem on his own. Right? He got a new job, okay, and he's a lifeguard there. And he was told he has to go get a specific swimsuit. Well, he was surprised to learn that Amazon doesn't sell the swimsuit that he needs. That was a first shock, is that there's something you can't buy on Amazon. So then he found a manufacturer who sells the actual swimsuit that he needed to buy, and they're in California, so fortunate they have an online ordering system. And when he pushed order, right, is when he realized that the shipping policy for the company was going to get him the swimsuit in a week, and he needed it last night. Oh. So, so my swimsuit can't be delivered the next day like Prime. So then he says, well, I gotta cancel that. So he goes back on the, the website and he goes to cancel the order, but guess what? The manufacturer's website isn't as nice as Amazon and there's not a way to go cancel an order. You, you have to actually call somebody and it's 9 p.m. at night and there's, they've all left and so he can't cancel an order. So now he's got an order for $45 swimsuit that's going to show up four days after he needs it and he can't stop it. Well, it doesn't, okay, so so he learned there that the world isn't quite as connected as maybe he thought the world was. Okay, that's not the only problem, though. Then he realized, wait a minute, I don't have $45 in my checking account. I've ordered something from this company and I don't have enough money to pay you for what I've ordered. What does that create when that happens? What, what, what's that called? Day. It's called overdraft. You're going negative on your balance with the bank. Do you know what a bank does if you go negative on your balance sometimes? They, they, they sometimes charge fees. If you write a physical check and you get to a merchant and you go negative and you don't have money to count the physical check, it can sometimes cost you $50 for the check. Even if you were writing a check for $2, the bank and the merchant can charge you like $50 total because you tried to give them a check that you didn't have the money. So then he, he goes on to his banking app and he says, okay, I'm, I'm gonna transfer my $15 I have in savings, which isn't enough, over to my checking account. So at least I have something in the checking account to maybe cover so it's not quite as bad of an, an overdraft. And it's at nine o'clock at night, so he, tries to do the transfer, and the app doesn't update his checking account balance, and the savings account balance stays the same. Well, so then what happened? So he clicks it again, and he clicks it again. So then he finally investigates it, and he goes and finds out he's got three transactions stamped up, all doing the same transfer out of his savings account into his checking account, and each one has the term pending on it. Pending means that the bank's financial system isn't ready to update his checking account. It's waiting for something to happen. There's, there might be something going on in the background because it's 
after nine o'clock at night, and they might have things going on with their computer systems. So now he's tried to transfer the same $15 out of his savings account three different times. He doesn't have $45 in his savings account. He's all of a sudden figuring out that these ledgers aren't quite what they should be. Now, this is a real world problem about how ledgers, our ledgers still work the same way, but it's not quite the same because you are in a different world. He can get to his bank account to see his balance, right? He can figure out, he at least could do that. If you've been back 40 years ago and he, he hadn't been keeping this, he would have, wouldn't have known. Okay, when you get a few decades down the road, people are gonna look back at this period in the world and there's going to be something that they're going to say, well, that was the major thing that was going on in that period in the world. Okay. I was born in 1964, and last year I built this graph. And this graph explains how computers have changed the world over the course of my lifetime. I had in high school, I think, in a math class, we had a computer that we did some basic, very simple algebraic formulas on the computer. That was probably one of the first time I'd ever touched a computer. My father brought home a calculator that was about that thick and about that big, and it did arithmetic operations. It didn't even have, it didn't have memory. It didn't do, it, it, it was very simple. This is the growth in computing since 1964. So now the US might spend about a trillion dollars a year on computing in some way. The other change though that goes with that is not just the growth, it's also the cost reduction in computing. Any of you have an iPhone? If you were to buy, I, I know the specifics on an iPhone, if you were to buy an I, your iPhone, in 1991, how much would that iPhone have cost you? Do you have any guesses? It would have cost you about three and a half million dollars to buy your iPhone in 1991. It would have cost you 1.4 million dollars for the memory alone. The cost of, if, if, if you go back to a gigabyte of disk storage in 1964, it would have cost you seven million dollars for one gigabyte of disk storage. A year ago, a year and a half ago, I was in London. I went to the the library, uh, the British Library, and I checked out a book that they will let you just have, spend the day with if you want to. This book is called The Principles of Arithmetic. It was written by a man named Luca Pacioli in 1494. And it was a math book of all accumulated math knowledge at the time. See here, he's got a hand signs for counting in different ways, okay? It's written in Italian, so people could understand it. Now when you get back far enough in the book, he wrote, he documented the first way of doing accounting, double entry accounting is what it's called. It has debits and credits. The first references to debits and credit are in this book from 1494. And, and the whole thing on accounting is that long. Out of the whole book, it's about 10 pages, the document bookkeeping. So that's when accounting started. And what he was talking about, the, the basis of accounting, the bottom of accounting is called a ledger. When you keep track of your money, you report things in a ledger. Okay, so there was a big change in ledgers in 1494. But the way ledgers work since, 1990, since 1494 have almost changed, haven't changed much at all. All this computing change, and yet the way your financial systems work, they happen exactly the same way that Luca Pacchio would have documented 500 years ago. How is your, how over the course of your parents' lifetime has how they communicate with other people changed. What are some of the ways that it's changed over the course of your lifetime? Technology. Oh, yeah, how, how in technology specifically? What might have changed? 
Okay, so messaging, texting. Texting wasn't something 30 years ago you ever really did, right? So message, but is that the only way that, that's changed? Okay, what else? Um, probably like, you know, how people used to like just talk to each other and that's that they could just call wirelessly without using like a wire network. Yep, so you used, to, you used to have to be plugged into the wall to talk to somebody, right? What about like video, right? Video would have changed over the course of your parents' lifetime. You think of all of those changes in, in the way they communicate with the change in technology, but the way our financial systems work, it is almost exactly the same as it was 500 years ago. The when we make computers, the computers do almost exactly the same thing that they did 500 years ago. There's been almost no change this is what I'm frustrated by in my work, is that there's things that we could do differently, and yet getting people to think about how to do things differently is challenging. What happened about in the 1990s is people started to replace their handwritten check registers with software. People, some people just did it on spreadsheets. Uh, Quicken was a software package that a lot of people used. And then they started doing automatic download of their transactions. But this still is the same thing. You still have two different places that the same thing is being recorded. And you can get differences between those two. This is a new, this is a new kind of system that more and more people are using. How do you keep track of your financial life? Statements? Spreadsheets? Scribbles? It's time for something better, something easier, something smarter. Mint is a free, easy way to manage your money that empowers you to take charge of your financial life. Get started with a simple one-time setup. Add your bank, credit card, home loan, and investment accounts. Mint quickly and securely pulls in the information and organizes it for you. That's it. No more bookkeeping. Mint keeps it all up to date. You can see all your accounts in one place, with one login, anywhere, anytime. The, the more people are using this sort of approach to managing their finances. What that is, this, this little app, Mint, and there's another one called Personal Capital and all these kinds of things, they're basically a mashup of ledgers, but nobody's maintaining their own books anymore. You're relying upon the banks ledger being correct, and your credit card company's ledger being correct, and your investment accounts being correct. It just combines them all into one view for you, but you never record anywhere. You don't have your own ledger that you record anywhere. So now, because you're doing that, and because you can get it updated fast enough for almost all instances, you never get these errors about what's the difference between what's what somebody thinks in their books and what I think in my book. So that's great, but the problem is when you get to businesses, businesses can't do the same thing because, for example, the IRS requires businesses to keep their own books. When you get audited by the, by the tax authorities, they want to come in and look at your books. They don't want to go to the bank. They don't want to go to your credit card company. They, they want to look at your ledgers. These companies all help you maintain your own set of books for your business. But it's still that same old method of maintaining your copy of the transactions and reconciling to somebody else's copy of the transactions to see if they agree. A couple of years ago, Bitcoin came out. Have any of you heard of Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a virtual currency, right? And it's become wildly popular as a potential way of doing away with cash, right? as a whole different way of running the economy. At the bottom of Bitcoin was something called blockchain. And blockchain was supposed to be a shared ledger. The idea is pretty powerful that you could share a ledger between you and another person. That's effectively what's happening on personal finances. You're sharing the bank's ledger. You're sharing the credit card's ledger. You're trusting their ledgers. If you could do that from a business perspective, it would help save a lot of money and reduce a lot of complexity. So how do you make that happen in a business world?
is the space that I've been working in. And I, okay, so what questions do you have? Any questions? Go ahead. Yeah, good question. So, so the, the, it's, it's hard to predict how this might evolve differently, right? There's a bunch of companies doing startups on blockchain, but are you willing, are you probably likely to go trust your money to a brand new startup, right? You download an app and you're investigating this app and it asks you, can you please transfer all of your money into my account? Your likelihood of doing that is very low, right? Because you want to know that you trust a company. So I don't think that it's probably gonna come from a startup because people don't trust startups. People trust banks, but banks aren't really interested in changing all that quickly. They've got a lot of other problems and they've got a large infrastructure of existing systems. So maybe banks could do it, but they're kind of challenged to do it too. When you look at like Google and Amazon, neither one of them are interested in being like a bank that's not the problem that they've solved thus far. They could choose to. So it's a little bit, of, it's, it's a good question that I don't really know the answer. I don't know. What is the process that you need to do? So if, if, um, if you're a company, the ledgers don't just record financial transactions. You also record other things in ledgers. If you order product from somebody, if you say, I want to get that, you haven't actually paid anything, that might be process A, right? When the company sends you the thing, that's process B. When you get it in your warehouse, that's process C. And when you finally make payment, it's process D. All of those kinds of things go on in the business system. All of those get recorded in a ledger. And a blockchain or a shared ledger, a true shared ledger, might be able to make that sharing so that you don't have to record them in multiple places. And that kind of brings up a good question. So trust is important, right? The company that's gonna solve this is gonna be somebody that's trusted. Bitcoin developed because they wanted a trustless system because they didn't think you should have to trust the other person you give money to. I think they were wrong in doing that. When Bitcoin defined cash as a trustless system, they were wrong in that you still have a trusted relationship even when you pay cash to somebody else because you trust the person that issued the cash, that printed the money. You trust them to not change the money or to repudiate the money or to go print a whole bunch of it so it's worthless. There's a trust involved in every financial transaction. By having trusted relationships and you trust somebody to share the data is key to solving this problem. But a lot of people today in financial systems don't think we trust people anymore. And that's not true. I found that banking on Wall Street, banking is all about trust. When J.P. Morgan Chase does a loan with Citibank, it's all about trust. And they do that on a daily basis. They loan money back and forth to each other every day. It's all about trust. Trust is at the heart of our ledgers, and trust is a measure of efficiency. If you, if you can trust people, you will have efficiency never available to people who are not trustworthy. We want to thank you so much for your time. <laughs>